There we are. Hey, everybody. It's Miss Megan, and I wanted to come on and do a Sunday school lesson for you. So during our circle times this week, um, we started talking about how this Sunday, that today is a special day. And it was called, do you remember? Palm Sunday. And we talked about how Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And everybody had heard all the wonderful things that Jesus had been doing, raising the dead, healing the blind, all sorts of miracles. And they were so excited to see him that they were waving palm branches saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. And Jesus did this. Um, and when he did this, it was him um, fulfilling prophecy. Things that had been prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born. And this leads us into this very special week. This week is when Passover starts, and we call it Holy Week. The whole week is leading up until Friday, what we call Good Friday, and that is when Jesus was crucified on the cross. So I wanted to share with you um, a Bible lesson today. I'm kind of going out of order, but I am going to get our lesson from the 52-week Bible story devotional. So this is week 45, and it says one tradition and a new meaning. So listen really careful while I read this story to you. Miriam uh, knelt down to gaze into the oven where her grandma's special cinnamon cake was rising. Most holidays, Marion had helped her grandma bake this cake, but Marion's family had moved last summer far away from her grandmother, so this year... Marion's grandmother wasn't with them. When the timer rang, Marion's mom slid the cake out of the oven. It's not the same without Grandma here, Marion said sadly. Do you have any traditions right now that kind of feel like this, that maybe you're separated from your family right now? It makes you kind of sad. I know, said Marion's mom, sitting the cake on the counter, but I've got an idea. Since we're going to keep up the tradition of baking the cake, why don't you use this time to remember and talk about all the fun times that we have with Grandma? Marion smiled. Okay, I'll go first. I love how Grandma eats a whole spoonful of icing before she even puts any on the cake. Baking the cinnamon cake was a tradition in Marion's family, but the tradition took on a whole new meaning after her family moved. That night of the Last Supper, when Jesus ate the Passover meal with his disciples, he gave that special meal a whole new meaning too. Jesus explained that in the past, God's people ate the bread and drank the wine to remember how God had delivered them from slavery all the way back in Egypt. But from now on, he said, when you eat the bread, you will remember that my body was broken for you. And when you drink the wine, you will remember how my blood was spilled for you. Jesus was trying to prepare his disciples for what he was about to do. And they didn't really understand. They didn't know what he was talking about or what, what does he mean with all this? They didn't understand that he was about to go suffer and die on the cross. So today, taking communion, eating bread, or drinking wine or grape juice is a tradition for many people who have put their faith in Jesus. We participate in this tradition to focus on Jesus' love for us and to remember what he did for us, including dying for our sins. Such love is always worth taking the time to remember yesterday, today, and forever. So here's a picture. And there's Jesus, and they are upstairs in a house, and they are doing the Passover meal. And we've talked about how God freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And that last of the plagues, the worst plague, was when God sent the angel of death to go over Egypt. And he had given his special people um, some preparations, some rules to do. He said, kill a lamb and put its blood over your doorway. And when the angel comes over... It will pass over you and you will be safe. That's why they call it pass over. And they would have the special meal and they would remember their suffering and their time in Egypt and how God saved them. And Jewish people still follow Passover today. And that actually starts this Wednesday, April 8th. Um, but what Jesus was doing is he's come into the city for this big celebration of Passover. That's why everybody was there. And he's had this triumphant entry and now he's in, his, in this house with his closest friends, his disciples, and they're doing Passover like they've always done. But Jesus was using this, something they already knew, a tradition that they already had followed to teach them something, to prepare them for what was coming. So he says he took some bread and he broke it and he shared it with everyone in there. And they all took a bite and he said, you know, you used to do this bread to remember what God had done for the Israelites. He said, but I want you now to remember this bread. I broke it because my body is going to be broken. So when you eat this bread, think about the sacrifice of it. Think about my suffering. Think about what I'm doing for you. And they ate the bread. 
And then they drank some, uh, back then in the Bible it was wine, and they, we'd normally drink it as juice. This is crystal light because I'm out of juice. But it's a symbol. He said, and when you drink this, remember that my blood was poured out for you. The disciples had no idea what was coming. They didn't understand that Jesus really was going to suffer and die for them. So the, he, Jesus was trying to teach them something that they were already a little familiar with to be able to help them understand. So when we you see grown-ups or when you as a family take communion, it's to remember what Jesus did. Let me keep reading. Jesus blessed the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, eat this in remembrance of me. And then he gave thanks for the cup and gave it to them saying, this is my blood that establishes a covenant, a promise. Jesus' covenant would bring forgiveness to all those that would choose to follow him. At the Passover, Jesus shared with the disciples his last meal before his death. That's why we call it the Last Supper. It was the last meal before his, he was taken away and arrested and beaten and died on the cross. And the last one before his resurrection. Jesus would even wash the disciples' feet, showing that he was a servant. They used to wash each other's feet because they didn't have roads and they had animals instead of cars. And so the roads were muddy and dusty and gross. And Jesus said, look. I'm the Savior, but I came as a servant. I came to give myself for you. So he washed their nasty feet, and then he shared this meal with them. He showed that to love our enemies. He even washed Judas's feet. Judas, who was going to very quickly turn him in for 30 pieces of silver to be crucified. He even showed love to, um, to Judas, even in that moment. As sinners, we're all enemies of God because our sin separates us. But God proved his love in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. So I want you to think about this that this week, about how Jesus, that we get close to Easter and we celebrate his resurrection, that to remember what Jesus did, remember his sacrifice, and to maybe take time as a family to go do communion at home. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just took a piece of bread and some crystal light in a cup. It's the, the symbol to remember that not only did God save the Israelites and pass over them of the angel of death, that because Jesus died for us, we get that same pass over, right? He's covered our sins. He's taken our spot. And when we have that relationship with him, we have eternity forever with Jesus. No matter what happens here on earth, no matter good times, bad times, Jesus is with us and he loves us. I want to leave you with this prayer as I close out our lesson. Dear God, thank you for the new covenant in Jesus. Thank you that through his death and our sins can be forgiven and we can know and love you. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down our, your life for us and remind us of your love when we forget. Hope you have a great day. Go outside and enjoy this beautiful day that God's given us. See you soon.